Hello there, gorgeous, gorgeous people. It is, of course, time once more for a quick and handy recap in order to get you all up to speed on what happened last episode of Icewind Dale. So you'll be all prepared for tomorrow's episode. So, in our last session, our cold -blooded, of our cold-blooded campaign, the Lightbringers had just returned from their cauldron adventure back to East Haven, where Baroth and Tonna went straight to bed. But Oster and Lucius had other plans. They went into the inn's back room to participate in a seance held by Rinaldo, the self-proclaimed greatest bard in Ten Towns. Oster was convinced Rinaldo was not, in fact, able to contact the dead, and uh, was, in fact, a fraud. And at first it appears that uh, his assumptions were justified. Rinaldo's attempts to contact the famous white lady were clearly nothing more than theatrics. Things suddenly changed when Rinaldo was seemingly possessed by a spirit speaking directly to Lucius. Someone calling herself Myrtle, telling Lucius that you left me, and the secret to saving Icewind Dale lies in what was left behind. Rinaldo suddenly returned to his body and quickly wrapped up the proceedings, but Oster and Lucius were not satisfied. You are a charlatan and a fraud, but that was real. How did you do that? Oster demanded to know. The two convinced Rinaldo to meet them in his room in an hour or so, so they could reconstruct the experiment. While they waited, Lucius explained to Oster and the now newly awakened Tonna that Myrtle was his sister, a fellow pirate who left Lucius' side after a heated argument. When he eventually found her again, Myrtle was grievously wounded, and Lucius had to put her out of her misery. Since then, Lucius has travelled around the world carrying the death of his sister in his heart, wherever he went. But uh, when his ship was wrecked off the coast of Icewind Dale, he lost the one memento he had of Myrtle, the diary. Reconvening in Ronaldo's room, many, many attempts were made to uh, contact Lucius' uh, sister to varying degrees of success. A hellish streak of natural ones and twenties led to much frustration, Ronaldo beginning to cough up seawater, and finally Myrtle's uh, apparition appearing again, delivering a cryptic message that she herself is what was left behind and must be recovered. This itself was laced with some uncertainty, as the magic used had a 25% chance of being incorrect. But two things were certain. This magic, the ability to contact the spirit realm, was not Rinaldo's, but Lucius. And that Myrtle's spirit was dreadfully restless, and with great unfinished business left behind. Meanwhile, Baroth felt himself unable to go to sleep. His mind laced with images of Shardlin. In fact, his mind wandered so that he suddenly found himself in East Haven's town hall, in front of the great Shardlin figurehead, with no memory of how he got there. He quickly excused himself to the tired guard stationed there to ward off the Durgar uh, theft, but he had only just managed to step out of the room when he heard the guard scream in terror. All four of them rushed out of the room, hair white and skin pale, leaving the statue unattended. Baroth decided to investigate, and what he saw when he stepped back into the room horrified him. A naked, dripping, wet woman with white hair draped over her face was tied to the figurehead, quietly sobbing. Baroth mustered up all his courage and went up to the figure, who quickly revealed herself to have a rotting skull instead of a face under all that hair. This was the famous White Lady of Lactinashire. Baroth didn't succeed in his charisma save and was possessed by the spirit. Overcome by this alien force, the dwarf wandered the streets of East Haven, heading straight for the docks. The White Lady was planning on drowning him. Luckily, the rest of the party discovered what was happening at this point and caught up with Baroth next to the frozen ferry by the docks. A brutal fight ensued, in which Oster managed to successfully turn the vengeful ghost, banishing her from Baroth's body. The White Lady caused horrible, painful memories to flood the brains of our four heroes, Tonach getting hit particularly bad, but finally the apparition was downed. 
Knowing the game was far from over, however, the four instantly rushed back to the town hall where they discovered, to their dismay, that the statue was gone, having been stolen during the commotion. The four bemoaned this grave loss when they were joined by Danith, East Haven's speaker. He now seemed to fully comprehend the weight of the Durgar threat and urged the party to get ready for the Council of Speakers due to take place in East Haven in three days. They agreed that all of Ten Towns must be placed on high alert whilst they ventured into the mountains to vanquish the Durgar King. Readying Ten Towns troops wouldn't be easy since that required a majority vote and the party were unsure of which speakers would be on their side. With many questions flooding their minds, the group finished the longest day they've had yet by finally taking an eagerly awaited and well-deserved long rest. And that is where we will pick up tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. A big thanks to Kate Irwin, the art supervisor for The Adventure of Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, who designed all of the brilliant art that you've seen on screen today. And, uh, of course, we look forward to welcoming you all tomorrow, 6.30, on our Twitch channel. See you then. Bye-bye.